This is Edwin K. Morris, and you are about to embark on the next Pioneer Knowledge Services Because You Need to Know, a digital resource for you to listen to folks share their experience and knowledge around the field of knowledge management and nonprofit work. Hi, my name is Eric Beach. Uh, I live in Appleton, Wisconsin, um, the Midwest of the United States. The most interesting thing near me is pretty much everything is interesting near me. <laughs> I get distracted easy. I study things. I don't know. I, I don't have a problem being interested in something. One thing I've learned is to know how to do a lot of things. You, there's a lot more opportunity for success if you know which levers to pull. So if you're good at a lot of things, if you have a a wide tool belt, then there's more room for you to maneuver economically. I absolutely love working for myself. I like the, the freedom of being independent. I like knowing what I put in is what I get out. I feel I have more impact at my organization because I work for myself. I started working when I was a kid. I did chores, pulling out trash. I was a paper boy for two years. I worked fast food at Hardee's, which I really love being part of a team, having fun with friends. Did a year of construction right upon graduation, building houses, joined the Army. I was 18 as a diesel mechanic, Fort Benning, Korea, Fort Bragg. Came out of the active Army, joined the Wisconsin National Guard, served in the Wisconsin Guard for 17 years. So as long as I approach a project and I make the project one inch better, as long as I'm at any amount successful, I didn't make the situation worse, I created value. So from your introduction, it sounds like you had an introduction to work from a very young age. What was it about work that was the most inspiring for you? You know, I would see like my uncles and neighbors work and I would see them grind nonstop for eight hours, just animals. And just how can they do that? I shoveled for 15 minutes and now I'm retreating to my bedroom. Yeah. And, and, our, and our moms do that and our, and our, our grandmothers do that on Thanksgiving. <laughs> the funny thing was when I asked you about that, you never once said what most teenagers I think would say for the money. You know, they, they want the scratch, but you did it because you want engagement. Right. As long as my hands and my body works, I'll never be poor. I don't, I don't need to have wealth. I like for a lot of it. Well, I, you, we yeah, do need yeah, some yeah, of it. You, do, you need a little scratch. We do need <laughs> some. Right. All right. So you talked about seeing some relatives doing things at a young age. Sure. And you specifically mentioned uncle and a grandfather mm -hmm. with examples of critical knowledge. Can we talk about that? What is it about them that brought that to you and why it was so important about the, the critical knowledge piece? So they showed me all the cheat codes in life, you know, how, how to set up a job site, how to do plumbing, how to switch out a generator, you know, how to install a door, how to do masonry. What was the question again? <laughs> when we when we first talked, we talked about knowledge and your exposure yeah. to somebody giving you the idea of what critical knowledge was. And you mentioned your uncle and your grandfather yep. as being those first examples for you of this transfer of really tacit knowledge, things that are just not easily absorbed right. or shared. Yeah. But with those examples of seeing how you can transfer skill and expertise by just sharing some time like your uncle and your grandfather did. I mean, that that's almost like a mentorship, right? I mean, it's really a hands-on. It's exactly what it was, and it's really the best way to exchange knowledge. When do you learn something best? When there's direct engagement. Look at me and you. Our eyes are making contact. I'm speaking clearly. I have your full attention. Right now, you and I are sharing knowledge as purely as we can. Because we're doing it hands-on, one-on-one. We both have each other's attention. So that's what you get when you're working with somebody on a job site. When you have to go study by yourself or do remote, you don't get that. You, you don't get to, like, break into the more conversation. But doing it this way, you can also just go off on tangents as well, and it's harder to concentrate and focus. It gives and takes. It's, it's, good, it's good to have a curriculum. I think you and I first had our initial discussion about education versus uh, mentor-based learning, the formal education doesn't really fit me well. You know, going back to our military training, 
a lot of that was hands on. I mean, you you did first aid by doing first aid. You didn't take a, a written test on tourniquet applications. You did it, right? right? You did the step by step and that repetition and the physical memory, the, the everything just kind of over time becomes not really a hard thing to do because it's mechanical. It becomes repetition based. Yeah. Out of all this history and all this diversity that you have experienced in work life, uh, and I use the word diversity because it sounds like, I think you originally said in your introduction, to be kind of generalist in a lot of different ways in order to be able to pick up things and make something right. work instead of having a narrow focus of either education or experience. It makes you more flexible, it makes you more pliable, it makes you more agile. Uh, agile, yeah, yeah, yeah. How does this translate in what you're doing now and first i want to plant the seed that be wise is what we're talking about right was a software system that eric has put together in order to do what what does it do eric it does a lot it, it does a lot it has a, a ton of utility i should say it has the potential so i've built it people have to use it I need to inspire grandmas and grandpas to post classes, aunts and uncles and business owners. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of benefits to doing it. It's a sales platform. BeWise is basically a sales platform. Think of it like Craigslist. So instead of selling tires, you're selling a class on how to balance tires. Ah. Instead of selling a sewing machine, you're selling a sewing machine and you're saying, hey, if you have any issues, I could teach you the double stitch. It is an enterprise Kind of a free economy of different things. Yeah, the name of my company is Free Market Education. My users are independent contractors. Mm. So you could teach a class called How to Set Up Audio for a Recording Studio. Is it freely available to users to pull from? Do you have to have a login in order to just go search for these? You can view it without a login. Okay. You, you can set up a profile very quickly. It's probably easier to use than some other social apps you've been using. Student users would, would apply for a class. The teacher would accept the application. Then the student makes a reservation with credit card. Teacher gets paid when the class conducts. Teacher can set up the class. Teacher sets all the parameters. The who, what, when, where, why, and how. So the teacher could just make the class content. So they could just upload four videos and say, hey, for 20 bucks, I'll let you watch my four videos. Or it could be a, um, a set of plans like, hey, this is how you wire this adrenal. The teachers get the post content and they can, they can sell it. So they don't even have to be there for the transaction. Or they could post content and sessions. Or they could post just an in-person session. So it's, it's a free market of educators. That's, that, mm. that, that's the name of the company, free market education. And the name of the app is BeWise. Now, this app, is it an actual downloadable app? Uh, yep, yeah, you can search the letter B, B-W-I-S-E, or B-W-I-S-E. It's the OWL, the logo. Smart, is smart use of a logo, yeah. Or www.bewise.app, so you can, you can access it from the desktop. So there, there's three interfaces. I hear your motivation. The motivation is to give a place for people to share knowledge and for people to learn yeah. but would you yeah. say that it is it doesn't sound like it's comparative to like blackboard or one of those type of uh, learning management systems that is more it's different different this actually sounds a little less stodgy than like blackboard as far as there are a lot of people that have had it, tried to build a lot of different systems so i'm a very little speck in the sea <laughs> Well, what's going to spell success for Eric and BeWise? Um, so organic users. If I can just publish it and some dude out in Toledo creates a how to keep bees class and he teaches some little Johnny how to keep bees and inspires him how to be a beekeeper, that would be success. That would be making the situation better because you applied effort. So I hear you going back to your own inspiration that if you can make something 1% or 1 inch better than the way you found it, then that's a plus plus. That's success. The, yeah, success, right? Yeah. Even if you spent a lifetime doing it, if that was your goal and you spent a lifetime doing it, you were successful. Well, I think that's a pretty good motivation for anybody. And I would ask that everybody listen to that really closely because I think that's something that a lot of people think that success is one big thing, one huge eureka moment. You moved a mountain, you know. No, it's, it's each relationship we have. It's each meal we eat. It's all those little pieces. Yeah. 
So one of the notes I had from our original talk was curated education business orientation. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which is probably a translation of something else you said. Curated education, I like that because, well, this is a self-service kind of thing, right? It's yeah. So the, the teacher basically makes their own storefront on BeWise, and they can sell whatever they want, whether it's bead banking, basket weaving, thermodynamics, you know, wh whatever that teacher is capable of having logical discussion to the point where people would pay him for his time. Versus the trust, the YouTube university or right. something you see on Facebook as right. Eh, any words of advice for entrepreneurs? Because this sounds to me very ripe for entrepreneurs to at yeah. least try something, right? Because experimentation is where it's at. Yeah, have a lot of irons in the fire. Okay. Be become good at a lot of little things, things that you can do in one to 10 days. So preparing a large meal would take one to 10 days. Painting a bathroom would take one to 10 days. Repairing car brakes would take one to 10 days. And then find ways to squeeze those in. You need to grow a small amount of money to have economic leverage. Like, hey, we should really now buy a snowplow. Hey, we should really now buy those DJ speakers. You have to save. You have to create a savings, both emotionally, friendships, relationships, knowledge. You have to create a savings to be able to extend your reach. Mm. Because if you don't have a stable family, if you don't have good relationships, if you haven't learned how to use Microsoft Office, <laughs> you can't do complicated So do you have this class on BeWise, this this uh, economics class? I should. I should, <laughs> I should go lecture. I, should, I would love to go lecture every class. I'm really good at lecturing and complaining. <laughs> I'm sure there's some universities waiting to call you right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me ask you this, Eric. As soon as we talked about critical knowledge for the listener could you define what you think knowledge management means i guess knowledge management is like having a plan like where do you want to focus yourself and how do you keep track of who knows what how do you keep track of hey she knows about that plant he knows about international trucks right around us within like 50 miles there's a lot of knowledge if you can keep track of who knows what try to record history too that's probably pretty important Maybe history should be knowledge management and knowledge progression is learning. Everything's in practice. We just try to do the best with the best intentions. Nobody's an expert. I mean, there probably is the smartest student in the room. Sure, sure. He can be smarter. Kind of adage of keeping your, your blade sharp. One of the things I wanted to bring up from a previous show that you may find interesting is the European Union has introduced something called the European Year of Skills. And it is an interactive mapping of just like you just said. Geographically, you can find skill sets. You register for this thing, and what it does is it populates. Uh, BeeWise would basically do the same thing. It would automatically do it. So if you signed up for a honeybee class, honeybee keeper over here, honeybee keeper at 10 o'clock, then whenever there's a national honeybee emergency, the government can call you ASAP. And so, oh my God, there's so much more I have to tell you. <laughs> I know you got a lot to talk about with what this can do. You've given us kind of the use case with kind of an economic driver behind it where you're selling your skills. Yeah. But yeah. what would be the top three things you want the listener to really think about when it comes to this service and just in life in general? Oh, okay. Top three. Number one, you're way more valuable than you give yourself credit for. So the big ask, the big ask of BeWise is what is your self-worth? What can you teach? So know that. You need to know your strengths and your weaknesses. Number two, have a plan of positive action. I'm going to try to flip a car. I'm going to try to make a sale. I'm going to try to thank that client. Mm -hmm. Number three is take care of each other. Once you give yourself to good, other things come naturally. Those are very positive and affirmative, and I appreciate your time and effort in everything you're doing, Eric. Thank you very much. You have just finished our latest Because You Need to Know a public service of Pioneer Knowledge Services. 
Please join us on LinkedIn and find us at pioneer-ks.org. If your company or organization would like to help us continue this mission and sponsor one of our shows, email bynTK at pioneer-ks.org.